Guys, T-Fit here. Uh, if everything goes right, we're having our, our first and last Frenchie breeding. Hey, I know, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. He said, this man tells the truth. He don't like Frenchies, and that is still true. But, let me walk you through what happened. And But, oftentimes, you know, it was a sermon I said at one time. He says, but means forget everything I just said and bit. All I'm saying is, I got some Frenchies. And I waited the right time. And we've got to do the breeding so everybody can get out because we got in under the impression that there was an opportunity. Let me be very clear. No one sold me the fact that you were going to get money. They said, Trevor, you could create a, fr a fit Frenchie. True, but it's not for me. Alive and moving. Right, you just said, huh? But loves you with 500 and about to do more quality yeah. on it. But so far, he's given a really nice sample. 600 million people. That's 600 million opportunities. We only need about four or five. <laughs> she said four or five, four or five. Two mid piece reflexes, two coral tails, and three distant droplets. Honestly, you can't ask for a better sample from your guy. Okay, yeah. you, you're not my guy, but uh, he's somebody guy. No, I'm not. Macho, he's doing really good at stuff. Macho, that's a good name. Is that your name, huh? Yeah, oh, he turned out. Right. Hello, Macho Man. Let me open your eyes. Oh, you got that already? Yeah. Sweet. Are you going through it? Uh, yes, she did. Hey. You, you want to do it again? No, no, it's fine. Yay! Alright, I'm going to pick her up, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a T-snap. Yes, and this part y'all can feel all day. Yes. Hi. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Easy week, girl, huh? Easy week, girl. Yeah. I'm so lonely. Hey, mama. Oh, oh, okay. I did brush a teeth this morning. So oh, <laughs> that's more than I can expect from a lot of dogs. So thank you. <laughs> All right, now you're yep. up. Yes, that way. I'll turn this yep. way. Yep. Yeah. So right now I'm inserting the shunt, which just kind of helps us get it over the pelvic brim. I know, kid. There you go. It's you're okay. okay. It's okay. No, it's okay. Good job, Mama. Good girl. Up there. Right now we're inside the shunt. Right there is the start of her vaginal tract beyond the shunt. I'm going to inflate her vagina with a little bit of air. So I have a hollow tube to follow. I'm going to follow this all the way to the cervix. Yeah. Which is right there in front of me, and then right underneath is for cervical oz, which is what I'm going to be aiming for. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Um. <laughs> oh, I'm okay. Alright, so I'm already through the cervical oz and in going into her uterus. So all of this around here is her cervix. I know, it's Mama. Okay. You're almost done. It's okay. You're okay. almost done. It's okay. Good job. Oh, it's okay. okay. I There's know. no more. I know. We're almost done. I promise. Okay. Put the scene in. There it is. All right. And then Macho semen away. Oh, the oh, oh, why can you? Oh, hey, I said the doctor told me they could. Thank you. She said if y'all put the so you do what? She said, if y'all put three months, we'll just put in three months. Uh, but I said, I know control some, like control two, you can't do those, not those. And so okay, we just so figured you all just, control would lump together. Yeah. So we weren't sure if they would control. That's fine. But she said, no, if y'all put three months, if y'all just put one, 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 one
Good job! Yay! You did it! Thank you! Okay, all right, so she can go down. Yeah, do you want to put her leash on her? Good job, Mama. Good job, Macho Man. Oh, Macho. Yeah, good job. Now, my buddy Rich, he has these two Frenchies. Crazy story. Maybe I'll let him tell the story one day. But when I tell you during before COVID, he literally sent a woman quite a bit of money, over ten thousand dollars to be clear, uh, to buy a female. And then COVID happened. And the worst part about this particular situation, the dog was in Canada, one of the places that, in my opinion, probably was relatively strict. It wasn't even probably. It was. So after giving this woman a good grip of change. He's like, yo, we gotta figure this out. This dog's gotta get here. So the dog gets um, brought over through a trucker. He flies to Denver, stands out in the rain at a gas station, picks the dog up and flies back. That's how crazy that situation is. For one, my buddy, he learned through his first purchase of a dog in Frisco that uh, a dog can make your house better. Just, it's just everybody's better in the house. That's just of it. And he said, you know what? Extra cash don't ever hurt, but he also wanted to do it right and kind of follow the, the, the path that the uh, people who bought the Frenchies from were taking. Again, he didn't go buy 15 dogs. He has a real job <laughs> and a real family and real responsibilities. That doesn't mean people who don't have families uh, shouldn't be breeding, but my point is this. Got the dog, enjoyed the dog, wanted to breed the dog. Truth of the matter is, as he said, I can't keep all the dogs. And it's best if I co-own dogs or put dogs in the best places. So where did he put it? He put one in my hands, and even more importantly, it was his first breeding. So guess what? He says, hey, I don't really trust anybody else. I need you to, you know, if you could, whoop this litter. And he just asked for my help. And during that time, whoo, crazy. A lot of things were crazy in his life particularly. And I never saw someone show so much gra great gratitude towards everyone who was, uh, a part of that journey and that was him having his first and probably last son but his first son who's a healthy baby but let me get to the point my buddy rich has real responsibilities and, and i do too he knew that i was going to do dogs and that's it so he says hey let's call on this dog and uh you know see what happens i immediately because i don't like get bottlenecked or back into a corner i go i like having females more so i reach out to my guy chris Earl the Merle's owner, and I say, hey, man, I'm thinking about getting this female. What do you want? Uh, you think you want to go in on her? He says, yeah. Yeah, you know, Trev, I trust you. Mind you, Chris has never seen this dog. He's never touched her. He's never petted her. He simply was like, yeah, I'll send the dude the money. I said, don't even send it to me. Just send it to the guy. Send the guy his half. I still own her, to be clear, because <laughs> uh, I just kept buying dogs. And uh, I made some payments, and after this breeding, everybody will have both their money back because that's what you really want out of an investment. Can I get my money back? And then in Chris's case, they'll probably have a little profit because the rules are simple. We'll sell the pups if you're interested in a, in a Frenchie. Reach out to us. Uh, we don't know how many we're going to have. We don't even know if she's, if she's pregnant. Uh, we'll, we'll keep you updated. But objectively, questions I ask myself. Could I create a, a healthy Frenchie? And then people would argue, that ain't a real Frenchie. This, these ain't Frenchies, you know, especially when you get into the color space. Look, I'm not arguing about it being a, a colored or standard or a real Frenchie or the head not being enough and looking more like a Boston Terrier. What I'm telling you is, is the same thing I've told you this whole time. Could I create some good dogs that wouldn't increase a person's bottom line when it comes to taking care of it? Yes. You heard the doctor say that the female, in my opinion, who's very important, is healthy. Good heart. Not, 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 her nares ain't like this. And, uh, you know, she can breathe. She can breathe. And then she, she walks, she hikes, she, she goes and swims, and she hunts prey at time. And it's not something that uh, the, the, the woman I gave her to even, um, it, it wasn't her goal. She goes, this friend, she's crazy. <laughs> but she enjoys it. And it just so happened this person who has Asha she's got a dog a Frenchie that's dealing with cancer and he's about 11 years old so it kind of works itself out so mind you me and Chris buy the Frenchie we get her Frenchies away immediately and I think after six months Chris and me both are like this ain't for us man we got to get rid of these Frenchies I put it in um Miss Evans hands and then I put one in Marissa's hands 
and both Frenchies have lived well and been healthy so when we're getting to literally the two year mark we're, we're right on time with when to breed because we've done it correctly this will be our first and last Frenchie breeding ever I am never personally going to breed a Frenchie again I will be clear in saying if I have whelping services or whelping hands and a close and I do mean a close person next to me got to be so close they can reach out and touch me says hey Trevor I need some help whelping this litter of Frenchies I would do it under those pretenses but guess what Rich is the last of the Mohicans and uh, Marissa she is a whelper so she can whelp her own litters <laughs> if she so chooses so life is good but I repeat I didn't want to get into the Frenchie space I did it under the pretense of supporting a friend who believed in the dog world per se I told them what I was going to do and we've done everything that we said we we're going to do and we're still just getting started I understand the importance of patience and pace and I set a good pace and this is why we are here today with all you guys as help and mind you part of your help is actually being inquisitive about things that could I mean you could better in your own dog's life so you keep coming back trying to watch and, and learn what you can and you just maybe just enjoy what we're doing and and you know drop gems in terms of credit and, and business and, and life because this, I tell you one thing, you're never just doing one thing. So, Macho's a healthy dog. He gets on the flirt pole. He uh, he does some uh, some little pulling when it comes to, uh, you know, the, the her on the, she gets on the rollerblades and they do, so he, he pulls her, turn around, he can walk a mile or two. I know his mom and dad can. And it blew my mind when I was around these two Frenchies, my buddy on, they were like running and I'm like, oh, I ain't never seen a Frenchie like that. Again, I repeat, foundation, they may not look Frenchies to, to most people, but objectively, they are Frenchies. If you look at a dog and say, oh, that's a Frenchie, that's a Frenchie. But the bullies, we just don't know. We just don't know. Look like a pit bull to 9 out of 10 people. And I just, you know, you let that go. But if you're interested in getting a Frenchie, please reach out to Better Best Dog, or you can reach out to myself as well. You already know Fit Bully Kennels on IG. And I don't know how many we're going to have. I'll make an announcement at some point once we do. We will do an ultrasound. I'll use this as an opportunity to educate. We got the progesterone test and everything done, as you see in this video. You got to see the doctors call off some, some good things. And some of those good things are his semen count was good. Um, morphology was good. Motility was good, which means hopefully life is good. And fast forward, we now just hope that she is sustained in terms of her health and is able to bring a healthy litter, litter in and if everything goes well we'll be bringing you a lot of Frenchy Frenchy info so stay tuned people keep taking care of those dogs Asha and Macho it's happening